G'day. One of the problems I had when I was making up my uh, um, die stock was I didn't get the, the tapped holes uh, as, as square, as straight, as however you want to put it, uh, to the centre line that I would have liked to. And so I've been mulling over a, a, a better way of tapping these things um, for some time and thought, well, I might try and, uh, and execute that. Uh, I have got a couple of other tapping um, methods that I use and I'll show you those a bit later on. This is a tapping head. Uh, it's actually made by uh, Piper. And um, I use this uh, occasionally for when I've got a lot of holes to tap. But the, the thing that is of interest at the moment is the way it holds onto a tap. What you've got is you've got two uh, round, or sorry, half round pieces which slide at 90 degrees to each other. And they clamp up on, the, on both on the square and the shank of the tap. And so these are a couple I've, I've already put together. Uh, and so they'll slide like that. Now, provided that the hole for the, uh, sorry, the V for, the, for holding the tap is square to this surface, uh, that should be, um, you know, square and that'll, that'll, that'll locate in the hole. And similarly with this one, so you get quite good location of your tap. So I'm using this as a model uh, as, a, as a way of holding the tap. So the next step in these is I've got to put in the, the, um, the v, v shaped hole. I'm going to broach that with my quarter inch brooch. Uh, I might need to do a little bit of filing just to take it out to the right size. Right now I'm drilling the holes for the, uh, the pilot holes for the brooch to, to go into. Um, because that's my datum surface, my important surface, I need everything square to that. So I've got this set up on some parallels. Um, drilling into a convex surface is not a nice thing because you may uh, have the drill pushing away. So I'm running a centre drill down there just to put a bit of dimple. It doesn't have to be big, uh, which can then run my drill bit through and, and, and give me my hole. I've just broached the, the, uh, the first square hole. Um, to line that up was actually quite simple. Uh, I just put the, the brooch in the pilot hole and then using my combination square uh, lined up with one of the flats on the side here uh, so that it was at, at 45 degrees. Um, then yeah, brooch away. Um, these ones are a little tricky because they've got the um, flats on both sides but I happened to find a piece of material from something. Uh, I think it was when I was um, doing those jack stands, but that just fits quite nicely there. I've broached the square hole there, uh, and then I've come down and plunged in M10. Now, a um, quarter inch square is just under nine millimeters across the tip, so I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of file work with the file to neaten that up, um, and just, just smooth that out a bit, but that's basically what I wanted to do. I guess if you didn't have a, a square brooch, you could file that out, but that's a lot of work with a file. Um, not to say you can't do it, but I find using the brooch just that little bit easier, but uh, I do need to, to neaten that up. Once I've done that, I'll then be coming back to putting a, um, a tapped hole in there that will hold the, 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 the tap or the tap shaft in place. Earlier on, I said I'd, I'd show you how I tap. Now, um, this is one of the the, the pieces that uh, I've just been uh, machining, I've drilled a hole, I'm going to tap that for the, for the grub screw. But the way I do it is I, I start off the tap in the tap, with the tap wrench, just a little bit, and then I check how square it is using the edge of a steel rule there. And that one there is not too bad. This one here needs to come up this way a little bit. Uh, and then it's a matter of just working those corrections in and after a, a bit of practice with this sort of thing, um, you can, you know, once you've got it right, you can, you can continue around. Provided you keep equal pressure on the arms of the tap wrench, you'll be pretty good. Some people say, well, why don't you use a, a, a tapping guide or, a, or something or other else like that? And the answer for that one is, is a, like a lot of these things. Um, tapping is a basic skill. And if you can't get a square hole with, um, uh, without, uh, with just some basic gear, um, you know, you're going to run into trouble because one day you'll end up in a situation where you need to tap a hole, you haven't got your fancy tap guides or anything like that, 
and you might be right, you might not. So it's, it's one of these basic skills which I prefer to practice uh, and persevere with, with you know, basic limited equipment uh, so that I know that if I ever get somewhere and I have to, have to tap a, a hole, uh, I've got a pretty fair chance by eye and using a, something simple like a, a steel rule, I can, I can get it square. So this is what my two pieces look like uh, on a tap once um, they're all drilled and tapped and all that sort of thing. So you can see the top piece here uh, locates on the square for the, uh, for the tap drive and the bottom piece locates on the, on the round shank. But because um, these holes are perpendicular to these flat surfaces and the flat surfaces are in contact, you basically defined um, an axis which is perpendicular to this plane. So what I need to do now is, is basically make up a uh, a holder with two cross drilled holes which are square to the axis of that and then the axis of that um, holder will be the axis of the tap. This is the other method I commonly use to uh, tap things uh, when I'm working on the lathe. Uh, I've just drilled a hole in the center of something and then I want to put tap in but as you can see there's a fair bit of movement there and uh, although I can't demonstrate it too terribly easily um, the jaws that are holding this tap in, they're only a, a, a two-piece jaw uh, and they're spring-loaded and so they can wander around a place a bit. Right, so if I if I turn that you might be able to pick up that tap is, is just you know doing a little bit of that. So it's not really a terribly satisfactory way of um, uh, of, of tapping. Uh, and the principle of this is good you know, I like the idea of the, uh, the socket in the tail stock which keeps things aligned but there's too much slop there and the jaws in here just aren't good enough. Now I could replace that I guess with a, a collet chuck um, and I could make up a new one of those to, to give me a, a tighter fit but I've got a different idea. I have a device I made up many years ago uh, for mounting a button die in the tail stock of my lathe and that's a uh, you know, a reasonably close fit there and that just slides back and forth uh, and I turn the die, I lock the spindle up and I turn the die with um, actually this screwdriver, it fits quite nicely, it, it, it works, it's got a nice handle, it's fine. So what I thought I'd do was take my tap holder and make it so it fits that, that um, what would you call that, shaft, diameter? Diamond order. So I've bored that out to that, just a smidge over that size, about two thou over that size, uh, and then I, I took that outside diameter to the, to, oh, in the same setup, I, I put that outside diameter on, and this one too, so that I've got the bore concentric with that and that. Now this is going to be the surface where I put my um, handle holes, and this is going to be the surface where I have my, my cross bores but because I've got that set up like that uh, it gives me the best chance of getting those holes going directly through the axis of the spindle which is which is ultimately going to be sitting on that diameter. Okay here I am I think I'm ready to uh, start doing my cross holes. A um, couple of things to note there I've, I've, I've got some copper strip around the jaws of this forgel. Uh, this is a special forgel I've got, it's just the smallest one. Um, I set it up like this once upon a time because I was doing lots of work on, on small diameter stuff which was delicate. So it's just a copper strip with the, the bits bent around the end of the jaws uh, and that's, that's quite good if you don't want to bruise things. Um, so I'm going to go down with the centre drill then through then probably out with something like a diameter 16 or something like that. Um, I've just got to be careful not to, to get the tip of my um, um, uh, tail stock here. But uh, other than that, I, I think I should be right. I'm, I'm going to be using the uh, direct indexing on the back of the, the chuck here um, because that'll, that'll just be uh, you know, quite straightforward. Another advantage of, of mounting things this way in the dividing head is that these two holes will actually meet in the middle are uh, four and a half millimeters apart that's a that's a five millimeter drill so they'll just um, you know bite into each other so instead of going straight through and running the risk of you know when it meets that hole kicking the drill over uh, I'm the, the first hole I did straight through because there's nothing in the row but the, the second the, the, the other hole I've gone in half from this side and half from this side I'm now going to follow up with a larger drill bit and do 
something similar. And what I'm hoping is that when these things meet in the middle, um, the larger drill bit will be rigid enough not to get kicked over. And because I'm not trying to, to, to push it too far, uh, it'll all uh, work and stay straight. Uh, it shouldn't matter too much because um, I think f for the final um, for the final finish, I'll either bore or ream this. I'll, I'll, I'll just see how I go with that. I ended up boring these holes to about uh, 0.1, 0.2 of a millimetre under size, uh, under, under, under the final size, and then I ran a ream through there. Um, I used an adjustable ream because that's the, the size ream I've got for these things. Um, so I've now got a, a, a size where when these are deburred, that just floats in there nicely. and. that one slides there too so that's all good um, but yeah quite a bit of deburring required both on these parts making sure there's absolutely no sharp edges there to, to catch and also on the holes um, even the burrs kicked up by those holes there were enough to stop this going in so I had to take it apart and, and clean that out but uh, that should be good what I've now discovered is that my uh, holes here uh, are not where they should be. The way this works is the, um, that V groove has to be square basically to the surface. So I'm going to, have to do a bit of work with the file to redress those grooves. They need a bit of cleaning up anyway, so that's uh, not terrible. You might just be able to pick there from uh, that, that that's slightly out of square. So this one needs to come that way and needs to go that way a little bit but that's okay we can we can do that uh, other than that you know it works quite nicely there's the finish article uh, took a lot longer than I thought it would to um, deburr it so it moves smoothly and to trim up those V surfaces so that the taps hit square um, and that took yeah quite some time to do but uh, it's it's here it certainly works um, and it's uh, a lot less wobbly than the, uh, the the existing one that I've got. So uh, all in all, I think I'm, I'm reasonably happy with this. There's a few modifications I need to make to it. Um, these holes aren't deep enough for the, uh, for the screwdriver tip to go in, so I may have to make up a dedicated handle for that. Uh, and the other thing that I'm going to have to do is look at um, a small version for the smaller taps. This will go down to probably about M6 quite happily but uh, anything smaller than that I, I may need to, uh, to do something better. Um, one thing that I have uh, noticed as critical and uh, would probably do slightly differently uh, next time, um, these holes have to be square to the, uh, the axis of, of the, the part here. Um, I think that when they are being um, either when they are being uh, bored or being reamed um, it's twisted slightly on me and uh, so they're not quite uh, quite square. Um, that's okay you can compensate for that by by filing on these um, on the V's um, but it did take me some time to work that one out because I'd put I'd take it out file a little bit put it back in and it'd be worse and uh, I worked out that yes if you put it in from this way it's different from if you put it in from this way so uh, just something to watch out for there so next time yes um, probably a little bit more support a little bit longer um, so that the tail stock can, uh, can take some, some weight um, and then trim it down to size uh, towards the end there. Anyway, um, that's uh, another one of my summer of, summer of experimentation uh, projects and uh, works well enough that I'm, I'm going to persist with it. Um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.